Hi everybody, welcome to the Tuesday edition of Source 16 News. Thanks for joining us. I'm Eddie Owen. Well, Murray Callaway County Hospital has a new chief executive officer. The Board of Trustees met this morning and unanimously approved the appointment of Jerome Jerry Penner III to become CEO effective April 1st. Penner is retiring from the United States Army as a colonel after 29 years of service. He has 25 years in professional health care with the past 14 years as CEO and Chief Operations Officer. He has served with the U.S. Army Medical Command in diverse assignments, including Blanchfield Community Army Hospital at Fort Campbell. Penner is a board certified health care administrator and fellow with the American College of Healthcare Executives and currently serves as the CEO of the Madigan Healthcare System at Joint Base Lewis McCord in the state of Washington. He's also a veteran of Operation Iraqi Freedom and the recipient of the Legion of Merit, Meritorious Service Medal, Army Commendation Medal, and he earned a Bronze Star for his service in Iraq. He also received the 2007 Army Regents Award from the American College of Healthcare Executives. Hopkinsville Community College spoke President Jim Selby spoke frankly about the state of the college during a breakfast this morning. According to Selby, enrollment has increased 30.1 percent since 2005 and students who need one or more developmental class remains fairly high. But success rates in developmental classes are still pretty low. In addition, Selby State's retention rates remain very low and the percentage of students who enter community colleges and who complete a certificate, diploma or degree are embarrassing. Meanwhile, Selby says in order for HCC to move forward, the college will have to grow and get better at what the college is already doing. The HCC president states enrollment, donations to the college, and grant funding are at an all-time high. And according to Selby, grants and gifts awarded to HCC increased 326% since 2005. The event was organized by the Hopkinsville Christian County Chamber of Commerce. Two Hopkinsville families lost their homes this morning when a multifamily dwelling was destroyed by fire. 30 Hopkinsville firefighters responded to 2121 Crockett Street around 845 this morning and reportedly saw heavy gray smoke and some flames coming from the dwelling. Crews battled the two-story fire for over three hours, which caused an estimated $65,000 in damages. According to the report, no one was injured and officials are still investigating what caused this fire. The building that consisted of three apartments is owned by Tim Vandiver of Hopkinsville. A Beaver Dam man has been arrested by police after they say he confessed that he buried his twin brother in his backyard. Beaver Dam police charged 36-year-old William Hatchett with tampering with physical evidence. Chief Adam Wright says an anonymous call phoned in and wanted a welfare check at 26 Church Street where police found a shallow grave in the backyard and the body of 36-year-old Robert Hatchett wrapped in a sheet. William Hatchett reportedly told police that his twin brother, who suffered from Huntington's disease, died of natural causes and he buried him in their backyard weeks ago. The coroner conducted an autopsy on Robert Hatchett this morning and determined that no foul play was involved in his death. William Hatchett was booked into the Ohio County Detention Center. Authorities are investigating an alleged home invasion where five men packing guns entered a residence on Madisonville Road over the weekend and robbed four individuals. A Christian County Sheriff's report released today said 23-year-old Brandon Wolf of 3405 Madisonville Road reported Sunday night that five black males with guns entered his home around 8 o'clock that night and demanded that everyone get on the floor. One of the victims, 21-year-old Miranda Quick, told deputies two of the suspects took her to the back bedroom and started going through all the items in the room. According to the report, Wolf, 26-year-old Walter Valentine of Hopkinsville, and 21-year-old Bradley Knight of Hopkinsville were face down in the kitchen while the other three suspects went through their pockets. Wolf told deputies that the suspects took $190 cash from him while Valentine reported his wallet was stolen. As the suspects were leaving, one of them reportedly fired a shot inside the home, hitting the living room wall. Deputies recovered a slug from the wall and placed it into evidence. Three Hopkinsville men who were involved in the February 2009 shooting death of a Crofton man had their cases continued in Christian County Circuit Court this afternoon. After pleading guilty to second-degree manslaughter, Judge Andrew Self 
continued 35-year-old Michael Mosby's case until Wednesday afternoon, January 26th. Mosby was originally charged with murder, but took a plea deal on September 2nd from the Commonwealth and had his charges reduced in exchange for a 10-year prison sentence. Judge Self also continued Philip Green's case until January 26th. Green is charged with facilitation of murder and first degree hindering prosecution and apprehension. Meanwhile, Judge Self moved 20-year-old Maurice Lane's case until tomorrow afternoon. Lane also took a plea deal from the Commonwealth on September 2nd and had his murder charge reduced to facilitation to murder for a five-year sentence. Lane is accused of providing a gun that was used to kill Desmond Welch on February 20th in Crofton during a robbery. Meanwhile, the fourth suspect involved in the shooting death of Desmond Welch on February 20th, 2009, was formally sentenced to 20 years in prison. Before sentencing, Robert Lewis entered a guilty plea to second-degree manslaughter and first-degree hindering prosecution and apprehension after he shot and killed Welch following a robbery. Lewis also pleaded guilty to drug-related charges. The 33-year-old took a plea deal from the Commonwealth to have his sentence run concurrently and will have to serve at least 10 years before he is eligible for parole. Judge Andrew Self also credited Lewis 622 days to his sentence. A Mayfield man with a long criminal history for drug and theft-related charges is back behind bars. According to Mayfield Police, Rex Clayton of West James Street was stopped by officers at the intersection of South 9th and Farthing Streets for not wearing a seatbelt. However, police discovered that Clayton did not have an operator's license and he was taken into custody. Upon Clayton's arrest, police found a bag of pills that were determined to be narcotics, not in a proper container. When Clayton was being booked into the Graves County Jail, officers found a bag of marijuana on him and he was charged with first degree contraband for bringing the pot into jail. This isn't Clayton's first brush with the law. He has been arrested over 20 times dating back to 1996. Well, Hopkinsville Mayor Dan Kemp and members of City Council at this hour are recognizing a city employee for his years of service. After serving nearly four years as the city's public works director and engineer, Bob Cope will be retiring Monday, January 31st. According to officials, Cope oversees many city departments, including grounds, maintenance, parks and recreation, among other departments. The public's invited to attend a retirement reception for Cope Monday afternoon, January 31st at the Public Works complex. We'll have more details about Cope's recognition at the council meeting coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. Motorists traveling on U.S. 60 in Crittenden and Livingston counties need to use extreme caution due to an oil slick that was caused or has caused traffic problems all day long. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet spokesman Keith Todd reports highway crews have been working with police agencies throughout the day to deal with an oil slick along a 20-mile section of U.S. 60. The slick started near the U.S. 60 intersection with Fords Ferry Road in the curve area of Marion near the 10-mile marker and ran westward to the Crittenden-Livingston County line. The oil slick continued along U.S. 60 in Livingston County from the 29-mile marker at Salem to near Three Rivers Rock Road just west of the Berna community. 11 tons of sand has reportedly been spread between these slicks to try to clear off oil from the road. Todd said a transportation cabinet pickup truck was severely damaged when it was hit by another vehicle that spun out and overturned near the three mile marker in Crittenden County. He reports another accident occurred when the vehicle spun out and crashed on Dyer Hill Curve. While the sand spread by highway crews appears to have cleaned the oil off the road, Todd urges motorists driving US 60 between Marion and Berna to continue to use caution. Meanwhile, a Catawba woman was taken to the hospital after she wrecked her vehicle on US 60 about five miles west of Marion in Crittenden County this morning due to the oil slick. According to state police, 57-year-old Betty Williams was driving west on US 60 around 9 o'clock when she lost control of her car on a curve due to slippery road conditions. Williams' car then ran off the road and hit an earth embankment, causing it to roll over, hit a culvert, and overturn again. Police say the vehicle then landed on its wheels and went back onto US 60, where it hit a pickup truck driven by 32-year-old Jonathan Martin of Marion. Williams was transported by ambulance to the Crittenden County Hospital. Police report Martin was not injured. 
A rear end collision with a FedEx truck on Kentucky 181 in Muhlenberg County this morning injured a Clifty woman. 27 year old Michael Burton of Alberton was driving a 2007 Freightliner FedEx truck north on Kentucky 181 around 950. When about five miles south of Greenville, he went to turn into a private driveway. It was at that point he was rear ended by a Pathfinder driven by 20 year old Emily Beatty of Clifty. Beatty was transported by ambulance to Muhlenberg Community Hospital for treatment. A Paducah man who police say fell asleep at the wheel was injured in a wreck on the Western Kentucky Parkway in Hopkins County yesterday afternoon. Kentucky State Police report 53 year old Leslie Ellis was driving west on the parkway around 425 when near the 12 mile marker he fell asleep, causing his pickup truck to run off the road and hit an earthen embankment. Ellis was transported by ambulance to Caldwell County Hospital for treatment. We get your numbers ready tonight to Mega Millions jackpot is $40 million. That's not bad, but wait till Wednesday and Powerball is $96 million.